So I've been really curious about these auto clutch systems, especially having stalled in traffic and been like, I gotta do something about this. I know a lot of the super motards, they are all auto clutch set up. A lot of them have uh, various clutch systems in it. I was drawn to the Recluse after reading the reviews for them on Rocky Mountain ATV MC, and I thought, you know what, as positive and as favorable as these reviews are, there's something to this, I ought to get investigate. Didn't know anybody that had one per se that I could try it out or test it. And so I thought, yeah, what the heck, let's just go for it. So I bought one, I did the review, and uh, this is unbiased. I was not sponsored in any way, shape, or form. Maybe I should have been. <laughs> but I just went ahead and just did it. So here's my honest opinion on the whole thing. You should buy a recluse clutch system if you want a faster cornering. You can lock up the back wheel and not have to worry about the clutch control or whatever. You just focus on your line and focus on the corner and getting back on the gas. Um, no stalling, better traction, uh, greater endurance um, as far as the rider's concerned, uh, fully adjustable setup to where you can get it just the way you want it uh, as opposed to other clutch systems. You still have the clutch to disengage, you can still pop the clutch to get the front wheel up or wheelie or do whatever you got to do, that's still going to work. And then also you got longer clutch life. There's two reasons why you should not buy a clutch uh, from Recluse and uh, the number one reason is the cost. If you want something good, you're going to have to pay for it. That's just the way it is. And then the second one is that you can't pop start anymore. You can't pop start the bikes. So you got to make sure that you have a good kick starter or an electric starter. In my case, I've got both. So that's not an issue for me. Um, now you think you, you need to be able to pop start stuff all the time, but the reality is you don't. I mean, if it's not going to stall, then you don't have to pop start it. Most of the time when you have to pop start, it's because you stalled. But that's the whole idea, and so that kind of cancels that out too. So I would recommend it. I love mine um, for those reasons that I just mentioned, and it's just really nice. It's also great for safety, you know, if you're going to be riding it on the street, you don't want to stall in traffic or to stop light, or say you're going to turn left and you stall. <laughs> You know, it's better to have a clutch system like this. You're just, I'm a whole lot better off having had it, and I'd do it again. I'm going to show you how to install the Z-Start Pro Clutch in a 2007 CRF450X. First thing we're going to do is we're going to expand uh, the gap between the brake pad and the rotor. Between the brake pads over the top of the rotor, and that way we don't mar the surface of the rotor. You just expand it a little bit. Once you've done that, um, it's really easy to uh, put the screwdriver in through the brakes and hold that out of the way. You can see we've laid the bike down flat. This does a couple of things. It makes it so that you don't have to spill any oil and it also uh, enables you to be able to put the little bearings in later and have gravity be on your side. Normally the brake only goes to here, the brake lever for the rear brakes, but because we uh, made a big gap it comes clear down out of the way. So just take your screwdriver and stick it down like that. So we'll go around and just pull out all these bolts. When you pull this off there's a little o-ring to it. Make sure to retain that. Just take your clutch cover Pull it straight up. Now I'm lucky on this one because my O-ring stayed in. That's going to make life a lot easier for me later. Um, if it sticks to here, just peel it off and uh, you'll be reusing that later. Uh, next you want to switch to a 10 millimeter socket and just go around and pull the spring bolts. I'm going to drag these to one side of the dish. And just go around and hit this like this. I was trained to take these off in opposites. I don't know if it really matters that much. We'll set these all aside. like the thus and get your blue shop towels and we're going to retain the friction discs. Grab another screwdriver here. Say some of my tools aren't the prettiest. 
It sure works. So we've got the old pressure plate, and here's our first friction disc. We're going to separate it from all the steel ones. Um, this, the old steel ones will not be reused, just the friction discs. Um, so what you can do, um, you want to take your uh, throwout bearing and just kind of keep it together and just set it in the cover or wherever for now. Um, the next thing that we're going to do, we're going to pull the whole thing out all together. So we're going to take that same screwdriver that I had with the hammer and uh, we're going to bend down the tabs for this nut. So look at it, I've got one on this side. switch hammers because this one I want brass stuff getting into there and as the brass hammers hit some steel in the past it's kind of got potential for that so I think you see here is more of my preferred hammer anyway anybody that's seen my love tap videos understands that it looks like we got a push rod that goes through the whole thing Pull that out now and set it aside. Don't forget to put that back. As far as the orientation, it's the same on either side. Just the length is important. I've had those get lost before and had to compensate with other stuff. So the next thing you can do is you can take a pry bar and put it through your uh, wheels, through your spokes. Put it in your highest gear. Put it in like fourth or fifth gear and. Uh, you see that rotated counterclockwise, I believe that's 27 millimeter. Yep. And you take your ratchet, set it to loosen, get rid of all the slack. I always take the heel of my hand like this, or you can use an impact. Just take the heel of your hand and just whack it, and it'll come off. So go ahead and hang on to that, go stick it on your blue paper towel, and then you can pull up your washer and your lock washer and set those aside. There's one provided in the kit, so remember, you know, this is a nice little uh, visual for how to do this, but it's very important that you read, understand, and prescribe to your instructions for your particular model that you have. It's also a really good idea to wear safety glasses and uh, still be a pump. One thing I forgot to mention is that you want to look at the bottom of this. Uh, sometimes you'll have a washer that stays on the back side like that. That has to go in the same way back into here. They always stick to that. It doesn't matter what brand it is, they always stick. So anyway, uh, we can take all of our clutches off at this point and just kind of shuffle between them obtain the ones that uh, the friction discs so we're going to be reusing those we've got a clean paper towel and just set that down and just kind of go through just uh, shuffle and uh, if you're thinking about a lady or something you know she loves me she loves me not she loves me loves me not and so on anyway you just go through that nice as these are already pre-soaked. You don't have to soak them. Which is nice. There you have it. So we'll set these aside. And these can become some part of a modern art sculpture that I do later. Stay, stay tuned, but don't hold your breath. So, next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take the kit and start putting it in. So here's what you get in the kit. You get the basket, as I've already dumped in there. Um, you get your wave springs. There's two different types that go on the inside, and then an outer one that's bigger. You get a lock washer. Uh, you get 27 steel balls in this kit. Some kits, and remember, if you divide by three, uh, you get 27 divides down. To nine and so some of them will have the uh, uh, tungsten I think is what they use and so you do eight steel and then a tungsten eight steel and then tungsten like an OKTM does that 
Uh, you also get the screws uh, for your pressure plate assembly and then also it comes with a little bit for it and then some 243 heat resistant uh, Loctite to put on those. Um, here are the steels and uh, plus one and then also your pressure plate assembly and a spacer gasket so that you can reuse your stock cover which I'll be doing. If you don't want to do the stock cover in the spacer and o-ring then you can uh, go with the recluse clutch cover that they have for you. So anyway, the throw out bearing, I was going to show you earlier, but there's a washer that goes over the needle bearings. I have it on there now. I had to rescue that from my old clutch set. I just took my old clutch set, just put it all together like this, and in the process of doing so, I have this extra washer. Hmm, where does that go? So just like the one washer got stuck on the back side, uh, that one also can get stuck. So, uh, when I went to first put this in, it felt kind of grindy and chewy, like it didn't want to go in there, like there was some kind of a machining issue. Uh, but uh, once you put it on the first time, it goes on easily after that. You can see it's got these little holes in it. Uh, if you have a silencer kit, not all models even have a silencer kit. I know some of the KTM ones had some uh, squeaking, barking noises. So you just uh, put a little O-ring on every other one. There's six of them, so you'd have three O-rings. Um, there's a link in the description below to show you how to do that in another video. The lovely lady named Raven. So with this design of a clutch basket, you can see that it's only got a notch on one side of that. And then when you go to look at the uh, lock washer, or retaining washer, safety washer, it only has a wing on one side. Uh, so guess what we're going to do? We're going to go to the vise and bend that down. So I've got the washer in the vise. I get it bound down. Leave yourself a little bit of room and then just whack it over. Notice I'm following the angle with the hammer and then follow it up. So you get a real nice clean 90 degree bend. Let's see how that looks. Oh, it's mighty fine. So we take this and try it out on the bike, see how it looks. As I said, mighty fine. Still pretty centered even. Probably could have smacked it up just a little bit more than that, but that'll work. After laying the bike down, you want to disconnect your clutch cable. Um, once you've torn into it a little bit, it's easier. Like mine's going to come undone like no sweat. Just pull back on this and then uh, line up the cable down the slot and then just push it back forward. Piece of cake, huh? All the slack you need. Alright, so I've done a lot of homework with my manual. I've read it through. Now it's time to assemble everything. So I take uh, the center clutch hub and I've taken the washer that always sticks to the bottom of the clutch and I've uh, pulled it off of the back of there. I put it on. Put this on. And the first time you put it on, it doesn't want to go. After you slid it on before, it should go on pretty easy. It's a very tight fit, machined to very close uh, specs. And the next thing you'll do is we'll go through and uh, open up our eight steel plates and we'll install them every other one uh, with the friction discs. So we get a steel plate, friction disc, steel plate, friction disc, and so on. And you can align these. These are from the factory so that the machine can put them on real slick. Um, and then you'll have that nice factory look. It's not going to kill you if you mess that up, I guess so. I see that there's these three marks here. I don't know what those are for in this case. I know at the KTM it's for the silencing kit, so I'm just going to say that that's what those are for in this case. This is kind of fun. One of those mundane tasks that's kind of an opportunity to daydream. It's where a lot of genius level ideas come from, is those kind of daydreams when you're doing a mundane task. Now everything's automated, so you never get the opportunity to have those daydream moments. Well, maybe that's why things are getting kind of screwed up. People still have brilliant ideas anyway. They just seem to happen in the shower. It seems like personally I don't get as much opportunity. 
That's what I'm saying. Makes me sound like I'm smelly. I'm just about done. This is unique. Uh, and they put a lot of emphasis in the manual and the other videos. Uh, that you always start with a steel disc, which is different because you usually start friction in friction. Uh, but you start with a steel and you end with a friction. And that's what we've done. Uh, so once that's in place, the uh, next thing that we want to do is we want to put on our lock washer. Um, now another thing as far as like washers getting stuck is you have this little washer that gets stuck on the underside of this guy. After you take out all your springs and your bolts on the bottom of this one, you'll have a washer. If you have one, you go ahead and put that on first. Then you put your lock washer on, the supplied one, and then tighten down uh, your nut to factory spec, as they always say. On this particular one, I don't have anything in the manual for this to say what the spec is, but on the other side for the sprocket, it's 30 Newton meters. So I can assume that on both sides it's about the same size nut, about the same size forces. I'm going to go with the uh, 31 Newton meters. Uh, get out the torque wrench, flip it around to Durham Newton meters on the back here. Set it to 30. 27 millimeters, as I said before. Put that on. And then uh, tighten this down. Don't use an air ratchet. You can use an air ratchet to take it off. Just don't use one to put it on, it's a bad idea. So you take your use a hammer handle rather than a pry bar. Alright, so we got a perk wrench set to 31 newton meters. Get it to click. We'll set that aside. Next thing that we're gonna do is get your channel locks. Bend that up on each side. Snug it down. Whatever the torque lands at, it lands at, and you just deal with that. For those of you with OCD or traits of it like I have, just try to make it look pretty <laughs> and move on. Pop goes the weasel. We'll stick that back in there. I'm going to put in the center clutch bearing. Uh, when we do that, you can either do that now or do it after you put in the center clutch hub. doesn't really matter. On mine, I have... Uh, the throw out assembly, the bearing, and then a washer. And this is another one of those washers that sticks to everything, including the spacer I have. And you got a little spacer. In my case, it says 01A. Um, you put that on. If you have the, a certain 250, you know, then you'll have another little uh, oil dispensing or moving piece that goes in there. And then you've got your spring mount. So. Read your instructions. I mean, use the video, get confident, get familiar with some of the language, even though I'm going to slaughter it and say some of the stuff wrong. Uh, but then you go ahead and put all the stuff together, and it'll make more sense uh, when you go to do the other. One of the things I really don't like that's happening here is that the lock washer is rubbing on the outside here. You can feel it scratching because the nut's not lined up perfect, you know, with the, with the ideal scenario. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get my channel locks back out and I'm just going to squeeze between the two to bring that in. Let's bring in that corner. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of this design. Of a lock washer. I'd use smaller tabs, I think. Alright, see if we can get that to go on there. And maybe these aren't even supposed to move, but. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I just don't like anything chewing and leaving behind a metal uh, shavings. That's better. I like that. So once that's in, you can put in your lower and it just kind of goes around it. And you see you've got these little uh, tabs or notches. You also have corresponding notches uh, that go around. Uh, like there's one here, one here, and one here. You can't see them on camera, uh, but just acknowledge that they're there. If you put it on wrong, it's going to sit too high and you can't get your snap ring in. So as I rotate it, you kind of hear it click in. So I'm doing that just so that you're taking mental note. Uh, once that's in there, you can get your snap ring in there pretty good. Start on one end and work it around this way. Everybody always has it pointing to the back of the bike when it's at the top. Um, I don't know how important that is, but uh, just in case, we'll just go ahead and do it that way. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is make a selection. It's decision time. 
uh, read your manual and see what you want as far as what RPM you want the thing to, to take off at. On a, on a motocross bike, something with a real light flywheel like this, a 450 bikes specifically, uh, you want to use something uh, that is going to engage at either medium speed or high speed. Um, if you have it at low speed, you run the risk of stalling. The whole idea of this thing is to not stall, so there you go. You have three different springs. These are the two that I'm going to be using that I have in my hand here. And then there's another one here. This one is harder to compress than this one. And then this one is just kind of a, a medium one. Uh, we've got all these different springs and these are adjustable. Everybody's heard that. The adjustable aspect of it is you can adjust where the RPM range comes in. Um, for example, if you wanted to come in at low RPM, medium RPM, or high RPM, so say you're sitting there idling, do you want it to engage now, now, or now, you know, as you're twisting the throttle? So the way that that's accomplished is with these three different springs. You have two springs of the same diameter that fit on that little uh, spring perch that we just put on the throwout bearing. So there's one that's a real hard spring, a heavy duty spring, and there's one that's a soft spring. So no matter what, you're going to be putting a spring on here. If I were to leave it like this, I would have a low RPM setting. Now that's fine um, if you want to do something of an off-road bike, a heavy flywheel, and you want it to just really come on early. I'm not going to do that. My setting is going to be medium. Uh, and you put this outer one on, and now you have a good medium setting. If I wanted it to be at uh, a high RPM, then I'd want to use the stiffest spring that I have in the bag and they indicate which is which and you can feel it in the bag even which is which so don't worry a whole lot about that read your manual um, so there's one aspect so I'm going for medium done deal um, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put on a little bearing holder and uh, we're gonna do a little test to make sure that we have the right clearance with our no-go gauges no go what the crap is he talking about so you got to make sure you index on your little ends here, or else it's not going to be flat. So I'm going to take the supplied uh, Torx driver bit, that happens to be a T20. I'm going to take two screws and I'm going to put them on there on opposite ends. Something feels wrong. This is just wrong. This isn't going to hold. You want to know why? I'm going to put this plate on there. you got to put the big washer retainer on. That's contoured to the screws and uh, you get a lot better result. Just having one of those days. That's why it's nice to read the manual, watch a video, get all the information that you can, and then rock it from there. Okay, so I put a screw on one side and a screw on the other. Now all I'm doing, I'm not putting any Loctite or anything, this is a test fit that we're doing here. So we'll take these screws and we'll snug them down. I have a Torx bit that fits on my zip gun I should be using for this. My little Dewalt cordless. So get that on there. We'll torque that down a little bit. If you have pretty much any uh, quarter inch accepting uh, bit driver, you can just put it in there and use it that way. So we're going to snug that down. We're not going to go overboard with it. I think these are only supposed to be tightened to about 25 inch pounds or 20 inch pounds or something like that. What we're doing is we're going to take our no-go gauges and you can see one of them's long and one's short. Wait a minute, they're the same. So you get them both to the short side and then you go on each side of the thing and put them in there and see if they go in smooth and easy or if there's some resistance. So mine, I have some resistance. They'll get in there but just barely. You know, they'll just sit in there just any old way. If you have no resistance and they go in really, and this one has even more resistance for some reason. But if they go in really super easy, then you've got a problem. And that problem is you have too much wear on your friction discs and there's too much of a gap. You're not going to have a good clutch uh, action. So they include in the kit, wasn't that generous of them? They include an extra... Um, steel plate that you can put in there that will make up some of that gap. If I were to put this in there then they really wouldn't go in there. So I'm going to hang on to this in case my clutch wears in the next little bit and I may be able to just get by with that go riding one more weekend before getting new frictions. So I've got no-go gauges. I do have resistance. I have a significant amount of resistance on each side so I'm good. No-go 
it's kind of a thing, you know, like if it goes in easy, uh, then you've got trouble. If it goes in with a lot of resistance, or if it won't go in at all, perfect, great, you're set. Mission accomplished. So you use this small side and just stick it in on each side. Once you've done that no-go test, then you can pull these screws back out. What I would recommend doing, given that this is all good and ready to rock, actually I'm not ready to rock, am I? I pulled my bar out from the middle. It's like I need to take some things out of the oven too. So I'm going to go ahead and pull those back out, pull all the bearing and springs and everything up, put my rod back in. You'd probably just leave it in. I just pulled it out because I wanted to inspect it among other things. Uh, but we'll go ahead and do that and then uh, get back on camera. Alright, so I'm all set up, ready to rock. I got my own dang bit out. It's generous that they make sure that you have what you need so you don't have to go to the store. Close it the clues there. They've been there, done that, they know what you need, they know what you want, and uh, boy do they deliver, they do a good job. No, I'm not sponsored by them, no, they did not return my emails and requests for a free set to make a video, and that's why part of why I'm not doing as professional a job as I know how to do, um, but uh, it also gives a better honest review for you guys, because I'm not kissing anybody's butt, you know. I'm just basically uh, calling it like it is, and that was a fun thing to do a video on. And all that noise. Alright, so pull out the throwout bearing. Come here, little critter. See it just pop? That was perfect. Pop goes the weasel. I'll stick that back in there. It felt like slimy, goopy goop. Feels like it's not getting down properly either. I'll explain why I had so much slack before. Alright, so everything's in there. Feels like it's kind of okay. Put in it for my uh, medium setting. There's more adjustment to come, so stay tuned, folks. And that, uh, that more adjustment to come is actually going to be before we tighten everything down properly. I had to take that screw out anyway, huh? Alright, so this is going to go on here and sit down and behave itself. I'm going to have to loosen that clutch cable some more just to get this to work. Um, but what's going to happen is I'm going to put all of these balls in there except for three of them. This is where your other amount of adjustment comes, adjustment comes from and it's whether you want a, a hard or soft option. <laughs> I wish I could sing the song, the 80s song, which do you prefer, a hard or soft option? Um, but how you want it to hook up. Do you want it to just lock on and go, or do you want a gradual one? And there's advantages to both. Now, the advantage to having a soft option, which I'm going for, and everything has to be divisible by three. You'll know what is going to make more sense here in a minute. There we go. It does fit in all the way. We're good. Okay, so when we go to put this together, there's 27 balls, 27 slots, that's all fine and great. Some people like to oil this or put grease or the uh, gear oil in it before they put them in. I'm not going to bother, I'm going to rotate it a few times and just let it do it on its own because it's going to be submerged in oil once I stand the bike up anyway. Um, in some kits you have three tungsten balls, I believe, which are heavier and they engage it harder. Um, but with this one, they're just all steel. Uh, now, the deal is, is this works on centrifugal force. As you increase RPMs, it flings these out to the outside, right? Right, cool. So the less balls that you have, the less force, and the more it's going to have to, you know, you know it's going to engage softer, basically. So 27 divided by 3 is 9. So you have 3 equal runs of 9. And if you subtract 1 from 9, then that's going to take away your thing. You want it to be evenly spaced. You don't want it to be lopsided. So what I did is I marked one with a V and then counted one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then go to the next one, mark a V, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, mark a V with a, just some uh, a Sharpie type pen. And so wherever I have a V, I'm going to skip it. And I'm going to ditch three balls right off the bat and throw them in my magnet dish. They're there if I need them, if I want to change to a hard option. it! I got to go pull stuff out of the oven. I'm going to finish this up anyway. Stop. Say if I'm busy, if I'm multitasking, I'm happy. If I'm getting stuff done, I feel good. 
So yeah, I'm cooking dinner, yeah, I'm installing a clutch. Makes me feel like a hell of a guy. So anyway, we go around. <coughs> Make sure to skip the ones that you mark if you want to retain that soft option. Now what's the advantage of the soft option versus the other one? Well, I'll tell you. The soft option gives you better traction. It's better for technical riding. And uh, it causes you to not stall on a motocross bike like this. If you're on a motocross bike like this and it hooks up hard and, you know, say you don't have the RPMs to sustain uh, the engine function or whatever, your idle's not set just right, you're going to stall. The whole idea to do this is so that you're not stalling. So that's why I'm going with the option that I'm going with because I got a 450. I got a really light flywheel on this thing. And I have a street legal kit where I am using it on the road. And I uh, don't want to look stupid stalling in traffic. Plus, I don't want to be a sitting duck at the mercy of other drivers. I want to be able to get on the gas and get out of the way if need be. So it's not going on there real nice for me. So I took this back off so I could see. So I get these to index, then I rotate this to index all without losing my balls. Perfect. So I just keep a little pressure on that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a couple of screws right back in there to hold this because it's kind of springy with those uh, RPM adjustment springs in there. And then, while it's held down, I'm going to be able to put on all my other uh, screws with Loctite. Makes sense to me. In reality, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin it so everything stays together. I'm going to go pull out my uh, yummy port on blue out of the oven. And then I'll come back and do the others. Turned out awesome! Love it when I do good cooking. Alright, so next thing we're going to do is we're just go through, we're going to touch on each of these with a little Loctite and put them in a the hole. So what you want to do is you want to tighten these down in a star pattern, like a super star. Now that just means they go on the opposite sides and that way it goes nice and even. If you go in a circle, this side's going to be real tight and this side's going to be sticking up and it's not going to go down good. Anyway, now you know. I'm not putting a ton of Loctite on, you don't got to use tons of this stuff. You just want to get enough to where you're going to do the job. Fortunately this thing's nice and clean. You don't have to fight through a lot of oil. If you're redoing it, it's not a bad idea to use a little brake cleaner and hose it off. Or, you know, like shoot out the grease on each of these. Hose it, there's no hose on brake cleaner. Just straw at best. So I'm going to kind of mark it with the stuff so I know which one to pull out and redo. What happens if you don't put Loctite on it? I'll tell you what will happen. They may come out. Probably not, but they may. And if they do, they're going to go into your cover. That's going to be the perfect excuse that you need to ditch the fat gasket that comes with your kit to space it out because it sticks out a little more in the factory work and get the nice recluse cover, but it's 200 bucks, so I don't know if you want to do that, right? I'm going to pop some tags, got 20 dollars in my pocket, I'm hunting, looking for a come up, this is oh so awesome. Alright, so I've got a couple of screws, bolts, whatever left over, not sure why. We're going to zip these down. It's $50 for a t-shirt. It's getting tricked by a business. See, you just go through and just uh, snug them down and go back through and Put your 20 or 25 inch pounds or whatever it is. Look at your manual, it'll tell you. And then it'll be the wiser. And you will know that knowing is half the battle. So 
It's funny how you watch stuff on TV and it just sticks with you. How can that not be in your head? That's what it's designed to do. So you gotta watch what you watch. Does that make any sense? So I'm gonna stick my no-go gauges in there and just double check that everything went cool after getting in and getting out again. Now, yeah, it's, it still can fit in there, but you really gotta want it. See, they just float. They don't rock, they don't move. Gravity's got no influence on them. It does, but you know what I mean. So we're done. So the settings, you know, we got a soft hookup because we marked it. You know, count eight and then skip one, count eight, skip one, so on. You'll know you're right when you get to the last one and it's an empty spot. So, we look at this, look at that, just look at that, just look at it, make sure it lines up properly. I'm going to pop some tags, $20 in my pocket. I'm excited. After this, we're going to do a cable adjustment. But I'm just test fitting right now, i got to make sure those are torqued to the proper number of inch pounds. I'm going to do that real quick right now. So I'm going to put my thumb on one of them. There we go. Now I know where I started. I know where you came from, son. Popping tags. Third world. Guess what song we've been listening to lately? Uh -huh. Can you guess? Make sure you got everything snug. I'm gonna double check just a couple just to make sure that I'm where I think I am. Start with the first one that you did, and then go back on and put your cover on. Get down. Pretty excited about this. You read the reviews for these things. This is my first automatic clutch on a bike that I own. You read the reviews and people just love them. I remember attending certain motocross races, supercross races, and I watch these guys dump a big old 450 bike like this. When it's popped up, you know, you got these advanced cams. I mean, the bike just is like the easiest thing in the world to stall. So they'll be going through the whip section. Watch somebody like number seven. Uh, I'm not saying that James Stewart uses one of these, but somebody at a major event that was the man to beat dumped his bike. Just total, I'm not kidding, he just dumped that sucker on the ground, in the whoops, in gear, just booking along. And I look at his back wheel, and the back wheel's not moving. You know, it's not spinning. I'm sure that as he was being thrown from the bike, he didn't throw it into neutral. But I'm like, how the crap is that bike not stalling? And he doesn't touch the kickstarter. I know he doesn't have electric start. He can't spare the weight. Gets on the bike and takes off. I'm like, what the crap? You know, is that cheating? You know, what's... <laughs> is, it, is he like become one with the bike where it just starts on its own when he just thinks about it? Or maybe he uses something like this. I watch a lot of these older guys ride, and I'm like, dude, they don't even have any arms. And then I realize they're not even pulling the clutch. You find out that they're running a system like this. I'm like, dude, if it's good enough for the pros and good enough for the old guys, these need to be torqued down on this bike to 10 newton meters. For those of you keeping track, watching at home, you don't want to crush stuff. You don't want to fall out either, huh? There we go. Perfect. Well, I'm excited. So the next thing we got to do is we got to go through and adjust the clutch cable, and we've also got to go through and adjust the idle. Idle adjustment is critical on an automatic clutch setup like this. So we'll go ahead and uh, get the cable hooked back up. Um, I can pull this out now. We're done with that. Let that rebound. Before you ride the bike, if you push down on the caliper uh, to make it so that this will go down far. Make sure to pump this a few times. Doing that will make it come back and be hard again, otherwise you're going to be like, ah, crap, no brakes! Nobody wants to scrape you off the trail, whining and crying like that.
The way that the Z Start Pro differs from the EXP is the EXP is you have resistance in the clutch like you normally would and then when you give it gas it gives just a little bit like about that much with this there's just nothing there at all you fill a cable pole there's no resistance um, when you go to start the bike there's still nothing there until you give it some RPMs and then the clutch gets really firm but when it's low RPMs it's just floppy like there's nothing there so I was really alarmed at first with that. I called technical support. I actually saw him at the Salt Lake Motocross later. I talked to the ref there. He says, yeah, it's totally normal. You know what's not normal? It's just taking your left hand and shaking the hang loose sign while you're starting out with your bike in gear. And that's just awesome. So you see I'm going through the gears, first gear, second gear. Then you just pull up and stop. And at first you feel like something's just horribly wrong, like your heart starts skipping a beat and stuff and expecting it to stall, but it doesn't. It's awesome. At first it's just really weird, but it's really easy to get used to. Too. It doesn't really, you see I'm pulling in the clutch and revving the gas. So it's just a really fun feeling. I think you're going to like it. Um, it's really nice for technical little stuff. You know, where you'd be feathering the clutch and really babysitting it and pulsing and nursing the gas. No, you just you concentrate on your throttle control and, oops, sorry grass. Concentrate on your uh, throttle control and your balance and, you know, staying on the bike and that's all you have to worry about. I mean, it really helps you to be able to focus on your riding better. Now, if you miss your clutch and you really like that, you know, Lamborghini sports car feeling of having a manual clutch, you can do that still works just the same you can pull it the same way just only difference is it's going to be a lot harder for you to stall the thing um, another fun thing is say you're up on a crazy technical ride you go off the trail and you dump your bike and bust the clutch lever off oh well <laughs> you don't need it so it makes you more reliable it makes the bike a little more bulletproof through this kind of stuff to be able to get you back home again I'm just going to shut up so you can enjoy the sweet, sweet sound of that 450 four-stroke. Now what about downhill? I heard that when you have an auto clutch and you go downhill, there's no engine braking and that it's just a real pain. I'm a technical rider and I need to have some engine braking going into corners as well as going downhill. It's like analog brake system. I'm not giving that up. I don't want to get an automatic clutch and lose that. Well folks, good news. You don't have to lose it. As long as your engine RPMs are up, you'll have engine braking. As I go down this hill, we got to get over this log here first and then we'll show you something. How about no clutch, no hands? Ha <laughs> ha! Wind. So as I go down the hill, as long as I have the RPMs up, I don't coast. Now I can coast just like I'm in neutral, even though I'm in second, third, first gear, whatever, doesn't matter. If I pull that clutch in, the RPMs will fall and those balls will go to where it'll release the clutch. But all I got to do is blip the throttle and I have engine braking again. And then the wheel motion and the drivetrain will sustain that uh, engine braking RPM, you know, to where it'll stay in. But if you slow down to the point where you're down to an idle, it will coast. How about stalling? Did you stall? I did. <laughs> I had a couple of instances where I, I started out at 4,800 feet above sea level. Up here, I'm up around, um, around 8,500 feet above sea level and due to carburetor issues, I stalled once. No big deal. Can't pop start though. As always, I'd really appreciate it if you would uh, click the like, subscribe, add to favorites buttons, those kind of things. Uh, really help the video to get more views and whatnot. I just made almost a 45 minute long video. What's funny is I get paid the same whether it's a 30 second video or a 45 minute. I tried to do a really good job and represent this well for you. Hope you appreciate it by clicking the like button. Thanks for watching. I appreciate having you along. Brap, <laughs> brap. Yeah, buddy.